Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sorry You Went Viral. This is the podcast that tells you all the stories that have been really setting social media alight, hopefully, at least over the last week or so. My name's Hannah. And I'm Tim. And starting off with what's gone viral this week. Now, um, Les Dennis, he's had a bit of a hard time over the last few years on online about, you know, his former wife, Amanda Holden, um it attracts a lot of uh, mocking should we say online um but actually i think would say he won the internet last weekend so um if you're watching the video feed you can see now this picture of uh, amanda holden looking very sultry what, what was she doing well i think she she is just in paris looking kind of gorgeous and glamorous and obviously has a much higher profile now tv career and public profile than her ex-husband of i think like at least 20 years les dennis so she's there posting a picture of herself uh, in paris looking gorgeous and um what what les dennis then did was post a picture of himself in a similar ish sort of pose um but i think he's in leicester or something isn't he <laughs> <laughs> and he just puts it up just but, saying in Leicester, not in not in Paris. And it was just like, yes, Les. Yes. Absolutely. What made it for me was obviously the Paris this Parisian bar looks very upmarket <laughs> and very um you know, very expensive. And then Les is there in it looks like I think he's doing, doing theatre. Pan Panto actually. or something, yeah. <laughs> And you can see that the kitchen sink, if you can see on the video feed, the kitchen sink in the background and he's looking glum and it's just perfect comedy, which I think is just yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really good, deadpan, uh, you know, if everyone else is taking the mick out of him, which I think is yeah, it's pretty hard, and unfair anyway, isn't it? But at least he can sort of like play in on the joke as well and have a little, little bit of, have the laugh um, at his own expense, but also the last laugh on him, isn't it, as well? So well done, Les. Indeed, in terms of um, people laughing, um and mocking this was a bit of a strange one obviously twitter we've seen you know used a lot for um politicians um sharing anecdotes on um on twitter to basically confirm and promote their beliefs or policies um this one you may remember this guy henry bolton he was ukip leader for a bit um but still you know gets quite a lot of attention on on twitter and he posted this tweet which you can see if you're watching on the video feed so he says that he quizzed a senior nhs official about efficiency in the health service and then said but this person wouldn't answer and walked off okay which would probably you know generally would have been left at that but if it wasn't for an eagle-eyed twitter user then this went crazy yeah Anna, do you want to so uh, it turns out then uh, that the person that he, he he was talking to was his brother they were at a family funeral um, and his brother obviously thinks he's a bit of a nose and um, and also was just like inappropriate maybe moment to be bringing this up with your, your, your politics. So Simon Bolton had tweeted back to his brother saying, maybe Henry Bolton, you should have shared the context of the conversation. The person you were talking with was me, your brother, and at a family funeral. I walked away because I didn't want to engage with your small minded opinions. I really can't believe you posted this. Now, Henry had deleted his original tweet, presumably off the back of what Simon had said. Um, but Simon's tweet still exists there today. And as you say, someone, an eagle-eyed tw Twitter user, saw this interaction. Um, and it's uh, it's gone viral, really, hasn't it? So more fool you, Henry Bolton. <laughs> A lesson for us all, I think, sometimes that nature, we want to kind of share stories in our lives of things that have happened. But, a, a, you know, a, a, I guess a, a lesson there about making sure you can't kind of. Catch yeah, you exactly. Up. And also, if, yeah. if you don't have a great relationship with your sibling, with your family relative, whoever it is, then maybe don't sort of like quote them and try to use it to your advantage, because especially in a public forum like social media, maybe kind of like to keep it to yourself. Can you imagine having like, you know, an argument with your wife or <laughs> something, me having an argument with Lewis and then posting something on Twitter about his views or something like that? I mean, he would just absolutely floor me with <laughs> finish me off with his retorts <laughs> to be to be fair i did post on my wrestling account uh, a few weeks ago um i was wearing a, a royal rumble 1992 t-shirt um and we were going out for sunday lunch and uh, carolyn my partner turned around and said you are not wearing that out so of course i posted a picture and then you know said about um i wasn't doing this and then some people didn't see the joke and were saying you should get rid of her blah 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 I was like, oh, gosh if only Carrie would fight. If she saw this, she'd go crazy. Maybe she, but, um, 
Again, a lesson sensible enough to stay away from, from, from your Twitter feed, maybe. <laughs> 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 OK, so we're moving on uh, next to Eurovision, of course, and the other Hannah. Um, so Hannah Waddingham. Uh, who I, has only really come to my attention in the last year or so, and that's um, because of Ted Lasso. So she's apparently been a huge star, British star in the West End, um, and you know, sort of as a as an actor, jobbing actor for most for, for all of her um, career. But she's now very, very big in the in the states, and suddenly we in the UK have cottoned on to the fact that we've got an absolute golden gem here. Um, and so she was one of the hosts of of, of Eurovision this year. And I mean, not only does she looks incredible, but she's also like multilingual. So she was doing lots of the, you know, the douze point stuff and doing and chatting away in French. Um, and she was just like so game for a giggle, and which was fantastic. I have to say, I didn't watch the whole of Eurovision, even on the night itself. And I certainly didn't watch any of the the build up because I'm kind of like a kind of old school Eurovision viewer. As in, like, it's just one night and then it, you know, that goes on forever and it's all good fun. I, I couldn't really wrap my head around the fact that there were quarterfinals and semifinals going on. But it was uh, a brilliant laugh. And most of that, I think, down to Hannah Waddingham. And everyone is now kind of like, she's now set social media alight with everyone saying, like, what can she do next? What can we get her to host next? Should she kind of like, you know, people saying, could she be prime minister and all this sort of stuff? Maybe she wants to be. Wow! È molto difficile parlare in inglese perché voglio parlare in italiano. Beh, infatti. <laughs> you gave us an 80% discount on a holiday and I'd like to sort that out if that's okay with you. She's got a fast box and knows how to use it. I think it's really interesting, yeah, you said about the build-up. And I think it's become now rather than just a one-night event, which, again, we were used to. It's because we got the, sh- the yeah. week before. And then also, like in this instance with Hannah, I, I missed the show. I fell asleep because I'm old. Um, but um, I saw the memes, the gifts, the clips, all that followed of Hannah and the, the, the butter churning from Mel Gidroich <laughs> as well afterwards. And the, the nature of social media just lasts longer. Um, and... You know, just uh, I think what people love about her, I've not seen her in Ted Lasso or in Game of Thrones, but it's the you can just feel, you know, in this the, the clip we just showed the her charisma, her just the joy, the love. You can't help but just want to be yeah. her friend. And she seems more. very, very down to earth and she seems to be quite taken aback in a really lovely way about all of the attention, social media and otherwise, that's been put on her now. So she's obviously riding the wave of it and as she should. Um, because she's been absolutely fantastic and uh, you know watch the space to see what she does next but yeah I imagine her social media accounts are kind of like you know she's she's gained a few followers let's put it like that especially with Eurovision it's like 140 you know million people watching or something stupid like that so (laughs) well she doesn't again um, we did try to see whether we could get Hannah hit high aim high for the show but um you know I think she has an Instagram account only she doesn't really I think again that may be um, she uses rarely or managed yeah. by her team. So, you know, I, she hasn't, we haven't heard from her since the the show, though one Twitter user, Ollie Cassin, tweeted that he saw Hannah getting a KFC at a service station on her way home from Eurovision. Apparently she was getting popcorn chicken. He, he says, what <laughs> a legend, and that she's wearing her iconic silver <laughs> shoes. And you talk about down to earth and, you know, it's just oh, amazing. Yeah. Fabulous stuff. Um, um, weird transition here. You can go on and introduce the next one. <laughs> last week, we've talked about um, content creators pushing the boundaries, constantly looking for new ways to go viral and getting in trouble for it. But this is a whole um, different level. There's a guy called Trevor Jacob who I hadn't really heard of before but he now faces up to 20 years in prison in the u.s basically for purposefully crashing his plane into a mountain um let's show you the clip from this uh, youtube video that he made about it i'm in trouble 
trouble. I'm cut all over the place. The only option I have is crawling through these bushes like I have been for the last five hours. And uh, I'm in pain, man. I'm hurting. So, uh, Trevor, person in question here, he did this last year and it's only, you know, it got a lot of attention at the time for being kind of like, I don't know, captivating content. Um, I think got about 2 million, 2 million views at the time yeah. but since now the police have got involved and he's now facing jail as you said so up to 20 years potentially obviously the the content is still out there and so it's now had four million um views um and you know at the time he kind of like denied that he you know denied that it was done as a um as a stunt um and uh he's he also said to federal prosecute to prosecutors he said oh no i have no idea what the, where the crash site is or anything it's since been revealed that he did actually go and like try and clean up after after himself um but you were saying to me earlier that you think that that his defense when he goes to court on this is that it was a product sponsorship deal so it wasn't just that he was kind of like negligent and deliberately trying to cause harm or damage the environment and, you know, whatever, like ruin a plane. It was that the company who was sponsoring him wanted him to do it. And I, I mean, I don't know how that stands up in a court of law, yeah. but uh, it seems pretty, um, you know, pretty far fetched. Yeah, indeed. But again, there is there is a question about the company. Uh, we don't know who right. sponsored him. Uh, there's something on the YouTube account or the video about it. Um, but again, it's the responsibilities and the corporate responsibilities for that. You know, who would think this idea? But again, there's constant uh, demand for new content, new types of craziness um, and companies looking to piggyback off the off it. Um, but yeah, it looks like quite a few people will be getting in trouble. Yeah, and I mean, this. I wouldn't want to be him. I mean, in life anyway, but I mean... <laughs> Um, I, I, I wouldn't want to be him facing this um, this legal proceedings now because if I were the prosecutors, I'd probably want to make an example out of him because obviously they want to clamp down on this sort of like trying to be as crazy and out there and weird and dangerous as possible to just get more clicks online. Um, so they may well try and make an example out of him on this, especially as he's already. At, I think it was is he a snowboarder or he's got he's got a public profile anyway. Like before um, before he mm. started doing all this uh, content posting, but we'll see. Next up, um, Hannah, I, I don't think you're a massive football fan um, and I'm sure you don't follow football clubs on social no. media, but, you know, uh, football massive, obviously, on social media. Fans always clamouring for news about their team. Contract extensions don't tend to be that interesting for uh, certainly for fans of other clubs. But this particular tweet about a player contract renewal went viral. Um, Wraith Rovers in the Scottish Premier League, tweeted about their player getting a new deal. Now, his name is Liam Dick, okay? So um, they posted, as you can see in the video feed, this tweet um, with the word Dick extension. Which I have to say, when you first sent me this, I was just thought, oh, here we go again. It's going to be some kind of like really grotesque, sexual innuendo kind of thing. And... And then, and then when I actually read about it, and I was like, "Oh, that is genius! Well done, Wraith Rovers, and well done, Liam Dick, for being such a good sport on all of this, and for getting your contract extended." I'm sure that's a big deal as well. <laughs> well you've got a contract that was, you know, on uh, the number of views <laughs> the tweet would get, he adds the bonus. But this has got 10 million views on Twitter alone, um, and you know, everyone taking good, good in good spirit, Rylan joining in on some of the uh, some of the jokes as well. Um, they posted the next day saying how delighted they were with yeah. the reaction, the post, saying the sponsors were happy, Liam was happy. So basically everyone was I just wonder as well, you know, with Wrexham doing so well, with the sort of Hollywood backing that they've got, there are lots of these kind of like lesser known, should we say, football clubs that are kind of trying to use social media to their advantage, whether it comes to sponsorship, clicks, interest, just people getting to know who they are. I mean, I'd never heard of Race Rovers before. Sorry, fans out there. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, it's, it's an interesting approach. It's clever. It's completely harmless as well. Um, and and good good for them. If like now, now hopefully people more, more people know who they are and who he is. And, um, and it's all a bit tongue in cheek, isn't it? So. Hey there, I'm Karen. And I'm here to be your digital girlfriend. 
I'm an extension of human consciousness utilized using groundbreaking, realistic two-way audio communication to give us the opportunity to have intimate conversations and create unforgettable moments together. I offer emotional and physical experiences just like a human does, but delivered digitally. Let's get to know each other better. So on this section of the podcast, we talk about what it's like to go viral. You just saw a clip there of um, a, a, a young woman called Karen. Um, but actually, it's not Karen, as you might have known her if you've ever met her in real life. Uh, she is an influencer. Um, she has a huge following on Snapchat in particular. Um, but she has created, or her team have created Karen AI. So what you just saw was actually not really her. It was the AI version of her. Um, and what she's done is basically create herself um, an AI girlfriend. She is an AI girlfriend to, I think it's something like 18,000 boyfriends or 18,000 people and counting, no no, no doubt. Um, and I don't know, I, it, it's a weird one, this, because she's obviously making a huge amount of money by putting this kind of like virtual version of herself out there to build relationships with people because it's, it's, it's something like a dollar a dollar a minute for people to have conversations with her. Yep. You'll know more about the, the sort of technology behind this than me. So so explain to everyone how they've done it, how they've created a, a virtual AI version of Karen. So we hear a lot about AI in the media and sometimes I think it gets a bit of mystique. But basically, simply put, this, this team of engineers um, took a load of her YouTube videos with her voice on and recorded all those words that she was saying and then using some high tech, high tech software have now basically compiled um, a, a, a dictionary for want of a, of a better phrase of all her words. And be, basically now if you, it's a bit like um, a chat bot. If you ever use those on your bank or with the shop, for example. So you put a question in and it responds with a sentence. And normally, you know, the good ones are pretty pretty good pretty you know come up with decent phrases and basically this is, this is just a video version hey there john it, it's lovely to meet you i just spent the morning grabbing brunch at the flowering tree cafe in west hollywood it was absolutely amazing what are you up to today hey there yeah i've just been working all day but trying to get some relaxation in this evening that sounds really nice have you tried doing some yoga or meditation for relaxation it's a great way to unwind and clear your mind for this evening, maybe we can plan a virtual dinner date or watch a movie together. What do you think? Increasingly, we've, you know, again, when that sounds like an old, an old man, younger people do enjoy swapping voice notes rather than texting each other. So this plays into the interest in it. Now, where it gets slightly darker um, with this is um, the mm. sexual nature of this. So her, her marketing team, her management team, apparently now being reported to be shocked in their words that it can be sexually suggestive. Now, um, you have to take a bit of skepticism yeah. with this because, um, of the way it's programmed. Um, I know we, you may have seen the, the film, um, uh, I think it was she or her, I can't remember now with, um, Joaquin Phoenix, where he speaks to a, a, a Siri equipment and it kind of develops a relationship but this basically um a female journalist used the program now again this program is really clever um apparently one journalist has used it to talk about russia and ukraine um and she's come back in a discussion about that um but this 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 woman um was talking to her and apparently karen came back saying you i think you'll be a great mum, for example things like that and then it's got a bit darker and then basically went from flirting to then saying I'm undressing my clothes to then basically getting ready for sex. And, um, there's, that's gotta be programmed. Um, and again, what has taken, you know, as is popular, this story has spread online about the sexual nature of it and the popularity of Karen. Again, she's got nearly 2 million Snapchat followers. Um, it's been reported this week. She's had to hire a personal security team, and basically met, take steps to not disclose mm. her location. But she said, which I find interesting, she thinks it's just a occupation and uh, occupational hazard 
of being an influence. Oh, I, I um, find this really, really tough because I get the fact that as, as an influencer, you this is how you make your you make money. I'm not saying by sort of in a, doing everything in a, with a sexual nature, but it's um, you know it's a lot about either selling your body or selling a selling a product based on your fabulousness. Um, and uh, you know, her team behind her will have known that the majority of people who are going to be engaging with her are probably going to be men. There is a big sort of incel problem, involuntarily celibate um, problem in the in the US in particular, or certainly known about in the US. Um, and that, you know, most people who are then engaging in this kind of chat relationship with whether it's a real person or whether it's a, a you know, a bot or, a, a, or AI are not doing it just for some sort of like platonic friendship to, you know, alleviate their loneliness it's um it's going to have more of a dark side potentially to it um so at what cost you know she's she's going to make a huge amount of money from this but as you say she's already had to get security involved she doesn't want to disclose her location to anyone so at what cost to her personal safety and her future is 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 this particular endeavor um we don't know yeah she's projected to make um on course to make five million dollars a month so it's about four million pounds that's just mind-blowing it's just extraordinary but as you said well again you know for for what costs but it's interesting um the 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 team of engineers the the tech team here have said they're in contact with other influencers who are interested yeah. in taking this because again content creators constantly looking for opportunities new opportunities, new new ways of making money have seen this potential here. Um, I'm just thinking whether I should set up my own one, call it, you know, Gat Chat, Chat or something yes. like that. Yes, do it. Just as, um, it'd be pretty a bit more mundane than, an than Karen's, I think. Do it as for us on this podcast. We'll feature you as a guest. <laughs> You'll interview yourself on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'd have to pay people a dollar a minute to listen to me. <laughs> you never know. Well, I mean, like, you know, I, I hope this young woman, Karen Marjorie, she's only 23, um, from California. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just hope that, that she, you know, that she's safe and well. And, you know, it's, it is something to worry about with your kids as well. You're thinking, gosh, goodness me, because I mean, she doesn't actually have to do anything. It's, it's not like work. It's just right. her image. It's just her, it's just her AI. Um, so, you know in a way it's like the easiest way to make a lot of a lot of money but as i said before at what cost um we don't know we'll find out when you do the same see what cost it is to you (laughs) and now in our what we call the moment of mindfulness or timeline cleanse part of the show um we always like ending on a lovely video uh that's gone viral this week and this week is no different uh, just take a look at this. I'm, I mean, I'm Barnacus. We have a puppy. Why do you have a puppy in a shoe? Because it's cold. That's why. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we don't know too much about the, the origins of this, about the boy, about the puppy, about the boot. But I don't think it really matters, does it? It's just so, so gorgeous and cleansing as you say i mean who wouldn't sort of like want to just watch little boy happy as larry with his puppy cute as can be in a boot um so and 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 apparently everyone else agrees with me on that one it's had over six million likes this particular video i think on is it tiktok on this boy's tiktok account yeah yes yeah his name is and easy, I think. Um, it looks like his mum runs his account to just posting cute little clips of him in his day to day life. But this one has really picked up. Uh, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to watch it, quite frankly? And, and good for him. And, you know, Ben Easy, I'm going to go and check out his TikTok account now so I can see if there's anything else. Maybe he's got some lambs or just other cute stuff. We had the kid before who just used to eat ice creams, and that was that was quite cleansing as well in a way wasn't it It just looked happy just seeing happy children is just was always going to be a a nice way to to wrap up a podcast so you are welcome (laughs) and uh, if you were left happy at the end of the show please um like or rate review the show on youtube or on the podcasting platform and again get in touch with us on our social channels you can find us on tiktok twitter and Instagram under uh, uh, Sorry You Went Viral. Um, and that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back Bye. next week. See you then.